Fantastic. All right, wonderful. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm going to uh, share my screen so we can get my PowerPoint up here. All right, I hope that everyone can see that. Uh, so I can see it, so hopefully you can too. Uh, so I am really excited to kind of announce, it, we're just launching this book. My new book, The Humane Hoax, is just out. I have edited this volume. It's an anthology with 18 contributing uh, chapters and authors, and I'm very, very excited to bring it to the world. And I thought I'd start with why I wrote the book. What, why did I want to compile this book? And again, I didn't, I didn't write it. I edited it. I wrote the uh, intro and the uh, conclusion and a chapter. But really, it's a collaborative effort of many, many voices. So I've been researching this issue that I call the humane hoax. Others have called uh, humane washing, the humane myth, that kind of uh, language for about 20 years now. And I've been vegan myself for 33 years. And, you know, early in, in my advocacy work in the 90s, uh, early 2000s, you didn't see the labels that you're seeing today. You would see labels on maybe meat that would be something like young or fresh, things like that. So they did use, you know, some kind of marketing and labeling. But what we're seeing today is a huge shift in the market. And I believe that it is because vegans and animal advocates were very successful with, with very little uh, uh, you know, we had, we had very, very few people, very little resources, very little money, but we were able to get the word out that something is not right about animal agriculture. Right. And I think people are starting to kind of feel that, uh, understand that, that something's just not right, whether it be the anti antibiotic use or the environmental impact, whatever it is, uh, they started questioning right? The animal advocacy or animal activist, sorry, animal agriculture sector. And so, you know, because we were becoming successful, there is now this kind of response from the industry, right? With labels that we're seeing like cage free and free range and organic and uh, uh, certified humane. There's lots and lots of labels now that are coming out that are meant to, of course, appease consumers, make them feel more comfortable with these products. Uh, and it, you know, I thought this was a really interesting trend that was happening through the 2000s. Uh, it was a, a bit concerning to me that I felt that it could be that it might, you know, lull consumers into thinking that, that there is a humane way to commodify animals. And I actually went into the research thinking that I was going to, you know, be saying things like, well, free range is better, but going vegan's best, things like that. Going, you know, yeah, choosing, you know, these humane labels is better, but going vegan's best. That is not what I found. And that's not what I learned. Uh, after 20 years of research and my first book, I wrote the first book actually on this issue on humane washing called The Ultimate Betrayal. That came out 10 years ago. And that book really was kind of a seminal work because it was again the first the first book on the humane on humane washing and the humane hoax, uh, and but and and there wasn't a whole lot of information out about it then. But that has really grown. Not only has the industry grown, the labels and this marketing has certainly grown to the point where now you see cage free labels on you know, muffins at the coffee shop or in a regular just grocery store it used to be just the, you know, health food stores, uh, alternative stores. No, now you really are seeing these labels popping up everywhere. And so I wrote that first book and uh, I actually started a project called the Humane Hoax Project with Alistair Van Cleek of the Micro Sanctuary Movement. And we started this project to raise awareness around this issue, uh, to get more people to understand what the truth is behind these labels. And then, you know, I, I started seeing more people writing about it, more people talking about it. And I thought, 
how wonderful it would be to start to collect essays uh, that could be compiled together into an anthology that could really show the, the issue from so many different angles, so many different perspectives. And that's what I did with the humane hoax that I have right here. Uh, so it's finally in my hands. And actually it's, it's been a really long time coming because, uh, you know, I started this project long before the pandemic, uh, and well, not long before, but 2020, uh, 2018, maybe around then is when I started collecting essays. So it's been this kind of ongoing process, 2019, and then the pandemic pushed publishing back. So that's why, you know, it's taken quite a while, but we're finally here. And, uh, you know, and I, I'll just say that, you know, I, I, I love that people are still reading books. That just, I don't want to mention that. Uh, that is a really wonderful thing in my mind. I think books are a way to really embody uh, an issue, right? I mean, this, in this, you know, we, we're now in this social media kind of quick, 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 you know, uh, uh, memes and videos and TikTok and everything so fast, fast, fast. And it's good to get the message out that way too. I mean, absolutely, of course, we need we need to do that. But I think it's really important as well to have books because it's it's a way to really sit with the issue, right? And really embody it, really get the feeling for an issue. So uh, so I, I hope that, that you uh, consider buying this book and enjoying it that way. I also really wanna thank Lantern Publishing, the publishing house that published the book, Lantern Publishing and Media. Uh, for believing in the project, for believing in me, and for uh, uh, for publishing the book, and uh, they're wonderful. They're an all vegan publishing house, so I uh, recommend checking them out and buying the book directly from them if you can. And it's been doing really well, actually. This book, when it first came out in late April, was number one on the Amazon new releases for animal rights category. So it was number one for a week, the first week that it was out. So I was really excited about that. Uh, I've been on, I was just on um, Unchained TV with Jane, Jane Velez Mitchell talking about it. Uh, Mark Beckoff, who is a legendary uh, animal emotion writer, has written wonderful books on animal emotion. Uh, he has a, uh, a column in Psychology Today Online, and he wrote a review on Psychology Today Online. So it's been doing really well, very excited about it. And we're gonna talk a bit about it today. Uh, I won't go into too much. I don't wanna spoiler the book, uh, but, uh, but we'll, we'll get into the humane hoax. So I'll talk a little about the book as well. So what is the humane hoax? So as I have here on the thing, and now my uh, the Zoom little thing is blocking it. Here we go. The mindset that there is a wide range of better ways to breed and slaughter animals to produce animal products. And so, you know, so a quick, de this is a quick definition. Uh, it's really this false sense that there's some improvement in the industry uh, and either ethically or environmentally and humane washing, green washing. These are other words for the humane hoax. But in a larger sense, you can kind of break it down into three different sections, three different parts. And the first part is humane washing. And that has to do with the labeling and the language around how animal products are marketed. So it could be a label, it could be a website, it could be a, a promotional video or article, anything like that, that is, you know, trying to say, hey, we're doing it better. Here's a better, more kinder way. And, uh, and you know, when the reality is very, very different for those animals uh, and there is truly no improvement, uh, if there is any at all, it's very little. And, uh, and there's so many horrors that they face throughout their lives uh, that whatever small improvement is not, it, it paints this story that everything's better. Uh, we'll, we'll get into more detail about that. So that's humane washing. The second kind of aspect or part of the humane hoax is greenwashing. That's another huge factor is the environmental cover-up uh, where we are seeing labels like sustainable and organic and uh, um, you know, um, grass-fed and uh, carbon neutral beef. There's all these new ones coming out. 
And we have some wonderful articles in the book, uh, chapters in the book that really dig into this, unpack, uh, you know, uh, regenerative grazing, stuff like that, all these new uh, methods and ways of farming animals that are being um, promoted as being more ecological. And I'll get into that as well as we go. And the third aspect is, is the kind of backyard, do it yourself, locavore, uh, you know, uh, all, all of that, that ethos of getting out of the industrial setting and into a smaller setting, whether it's your backyard or a, you know, small uh, uh, operation. And, and then there's these supposed improvements uh, in the lives of the animals and the environmental impact. And again, I'll, I'll get into more detail about that too, but that's another aspect is someone, you know, that wants to perhaps raise chickens for eggs uh, or other animals, chickens, rabbits are becoming very pop- popular to slaughter for meat uh, in, these, in this kind of way, in this kind of backyard uh, butchery. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, oh, that's going the wrong way. Let's go this way. Wait. Yes. No. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so once again, my thing is blocking. I'm going to put it over here. All right. So part one, uh, the little Zoom thing, I am having to move it around. So I hope, I can hope. We, we can yeah. do is um, that, that Zoom button. Um, can, can, there's, a, there's three um, dots at the right of it. You can do hide floating mini controls and it'll, it'll hide the bar for you. Ah, let's see. That would be great. I think it's fine where it is now, but just in case. And they can bring it up by playing, pressing escape. Hide video panel? Uh, on the, um, there should be hide floating mini controls. Hide floating. Oh, yes. Okay. That was scary to do that. Oh, no, no. I, I, I liked those. Oh, you like those? Okay. Oh, so press, press escape then. Escape. To bring them back. Oh, good. Yeah. It brought it back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the videos. Anyway, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll keep moving it around. It's fine. Um, okay. So, uh, so part one in the book, there's actually four parts in the book. There is uh, uh, humane washing. Greenwashing is the second part. The third part I'm calling language and labels. And the fourth part is spiritual dimensions. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about all of those sections, but uh, the first part, humane washing, has really some wonderful uh, uh, chapters that I put at the very beginning because the first two chapters I put at the, the beginning because they had these really, really heartfelt and poignant uh, stories about um, animals that are actually victims of the humane hoax. Uh, The first one is called A Pig Called Silver and it's by Ingrid Taylor. And she actually is, uh, um, she was raised on a pig farm. Her family had a pig farm when she was a little girl and she was raised on this farm and there was one little pig that was a runt of the litter named uh, Silver, that they named Silver because the mom took Silver into the home, into the, into the human's home and, uh, and raised little Silver. And it's this really poignant and, and heart-wrenching story uh, about what happens to Silver once she grows up uh, and just the realities of animal farming no matter the label, no matter the scale. Uh, and that's what the humane hoax is about. So that's a really beautiful uh, chapter, that first chapter. The terrible truths about backyard chicken farming is the second chapter that's with Alistair Van Cleek. And again, just fantastic stuff. Uh, Carol Adams, the legendary, wonderful, amazing Carol Adams, who has uh, written so much wonderful, uh, incredible works for animal rights for many, many years. She wrote, of course, The Sexual Politics of Meat uh, back in, I believe, 1990, and so many good books since then. She has a chapter. I was just honored that she contributed a chapter to this, and it's called One Bad Day. And it is, you know, it's it's that what we hear from farmers and from people that are supposedly buying from these small-scale operations 
where they say, oh, well, these animals, they just had one bad day, meaning the, the slaughter, <laughs> the, the, the day they go to slaughter. And Carol does a wonderful job of unpacking first how, no, there's numerous bad days, you know, when they are de-beaked, it's a bad day. When, they, when their baby is taken away from them as in, in the dairy industry and dragged away, that's a bad day. Uh, you know, when they have uh, their artificial insemination in, in turkey farming, in, uh, uh, in dairy farming, that's a bad day. There's so many days uh, and so many aspects and things that happen to them, dehorning, uh, uh, you know, branding, castration of the pigs and of, and of uh, cows. So, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of bad days. Uh, and then to call the slaughter a bad day, it's, it's uh, it, you know, no, that it, it's beyond just having I mean, a bad day is when you like stub your toe or I, th I think she used the, used the examples of stub your toe or spill some coffee in the car. You know, that's a bad day. The, the, the horror of having your life taken in a brutal and scary way, that's not just a bad day. <laughs> you know, that's a horrific um, tragedy. And, and to trivialize it that way is really just awful. Uh, so incredible, incredible stories. But uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on now, let's see. Just uh, just some stuff around the humane hoax that I'd love to share with you. We have this kind of romanticized notion about the small farm, right? The small scale. As long as it's small, then it's okay. As long as it's not this big industrial impersonal thing. If it's if it's a small farm, then hey, all all, all the horrors that the animals endure must be better, right? It must it must be a, 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 all all right now. Um, that is not the case. And just because it's a small farm or a local farm does not mean that it's more ethical, doesn't mean that it's more environmental. Uh, and Joanne Kong is another wonderful author in the book. Uh, she has a, a great um, chapter where she gets into the language. She's in the, the language and labels section. And uh, she actually wrote this fantastic uh, anthology called Vegan Voices, Essays by Inspiring Changemakers. So that's another wonderful anthology that Joanne Kong wrote. But here's a quote from her chapter. The scale of the operation is irrelevant. To the industry, all farmed animals are nothing more than objects and cruel common procedures are universal to making a product profitable. On small farms, it is a tragic, uh, it, it, um, it is tragic that uh, connections of trust are sometimes forged between the animal and the farmer only to be horrifically betrayed when it comes time for the animal to be slaughtered. And that's why I named my first book, The Ultimate Betrayal. Because even if there is this, you know, very, very rare situation where uh, the farmer is using a kind hand to the animal and, and actually um, being, you know, a, a, a friend to this animal, which is just does it some it's a fantasy it doesn't happen uh but even in these rare if it, if there is a rare instance where this happens they're still going to be killing this animal in just a few weeks or a few months i mean that's it's <laughs> it's uh really really brutal um and just a betrayal absolute betrayal of these young healthy animals that want to live and animals want to live they will fight for life when they are threatened. They, when they know what's coming, they fight for life. And you know, it, it's, um, it's just such a betrayal. Mm -hmm.